I've spoken to you about the desirelessness of surrender. Now I would like to talk about fearlessness. Now, just as a reminder, when Holy Spirit says, I've spoken to you about the desirelessness of surrender, this was a message that um, we read a few weeks ago where Holy Spirit um, pointed out that when we are surrendered, uh, we really don't have a personal desire. Um, If I have a personal desire, a personal will, um, that is going to be in the way of my surrender. I will somehow unconsciously try to work for, uh, try to find guidance for, try to find signs for, try to find a way to um, that which I'm desiring, whether that be a relationship, whether that be money, um, you know, attention, um, you know, I'll try and get what I want. (laughs) Um, Spirit said, in order to be truly, truly, truly surrendered, um, I need to get down to a point of desirelessness, which really means desiring nothing but um, whatever Holy Spirit would give me. That that's a true state of surrender. So again, I've spoken to you about the desirelessness of surrender. Now I would like to talk about fearlessness. Desire, other than the desire to know my word, can block the guidance I have to give. Fear also can block guidance, or it can prevent you from moving forward with what I have asked you to do. Fear is a complex emotion because it comes from many judgments within the mind and it can be experienced in many ways. Fear may not seem like fear because it may be experienced as something else, such as anger, criticism, or hatred. The ongoing commenter within the mind is a manifestation of fear. And probably um, all of us are familiar with the commenter in the mind. It's that voice in the mind that just has a comment about everything. (laughs) It has an opinion and a judgment about everything. And spirit is saying that is a manifestation of fear. So it doesn't feel like fear. So um, we're not just talking about the feeling of fear, but we're talking about fear in its many manifestations. The problem with fear is that nothing specific can be pinpointed and fixed by you doing something in form or by you doing something differently. Fear is zero code, so fear must be recognized as nothing. All right, well, most people in the world at this point who are not um, on this spiritual path and are not um, looking at the teachings of Holy Spirit in one form or another. Most people in the world, if we blame a specific situation for the fear, then what we try to do is we try to resolve that situation. Um, we try to get out of a relationship if the relationship is fearful. We try to uh, get a specific type of job, or we try to move from one location to another, or we try to get the people around us to behave differently, or we try to whatever, right, whatever. And what Spirit says in this particular sentence is the problem with fear is that nothing specific can be pinpointed. Oh, that's interesting. I just remembered that the prayer was to have gratitude for nothing specific. And here we are talking about nothing specific again. But the problem with fear is that nothing specific can be pinpointed and fixed by you doing something in form or by you doing something differently. What spirit means by that, if, if I do believe that running out of money is my, is my cause of my fear, if I believe that's the cause of my fear, um, it is very possible that I could go out and get a job or get money in some other way, and um, I will feel a relief. The problem is, yeah, it's like ice cream. (laughs) It's a temporary fix. The problem is fear will always come back. 
maybe it won't be fear about money anymore if I've really solved that problem, you know, perfectly and I never have money problems again. Maybe I'll never see fear around money again, but I may then begin to have fear in my relationships. I may have fear about my children's choices. I may begin to have fear about aging, fear about getting sick, fear about death. So there's nothing specific that can be pinpointed and fixed, right? There's nothing specific that we can change and then become perfectly fearless. That's what Spirit is saying. There's nothing in the world that we can control there's no drug that we can take. There's nothing in the world that we can change and then become perfectly fearless. Everything is just a temporary fix. Everything is a covering of the symptoms. And because the fear was not healed, it will always find another way and another day. The problem with fear is that nothing specific can be pinpointed and fixed by you doing something in form or by you doing something differently. Fear is zero code, so fear must be recognized as nothing. What Spirit is really telling us is that um, if fear is zero code, if you've been following the messages of Regina and Laurent, then you know that zero code literally means not true. Fear is not true. Said another way, fear only comes from our imagination. I remember when I was having my first experience with uh, fear. I did not really experience a lot of conscious fear until after I joined the spiritual path, till after I made a conscious decision to awaken. Um, my fear has come almost after that decision. Uh, there wasn't a lot of fear before that, some, but um, not with the same intensity. So my very first real experience with fear was when um, I was guided to leave my job and move to North Carolina. And there was a lot of fear with that, a lot of fear. And I was talking to a friend of mine at work, and I was describing for him the fear that I was feeling. And he said something to me um, that rocked my world. <laughs> first, he just asked me. At, at first, I didn't understand that what he was saying was even related to my discussion with him because he said, Regina, he said, do you ever have fantasies? Well, you know, I didn't know what that had to do with the conversation, but I had to admit, yes, you know, I've had fantasies. <laughs> so still I told him yes. And he said, fear is nothing but a negative fantasy. And I got that immediately. I knew exactly what he was talking about. If I was having a fantasy in my head, right, making up a story, that, um, you know, at this point, remember, I didn't even know that NTI was going to come. I didn't really know why Spirit was asking me to go. Um, so there was a lot of unknown there. And that's really what I was afraid of. But if I had had a story in my mind, any story at all, let's say I made up a fantasy that Spirit was going to have me move and then I was going to run into this guru and this guru would have all of the answers I've ever wanted and at the feet of this guru that nobody heard about in North Carolina, I would awaken. Right? If this fantasy was running in my mind, I would feel really good. <laughs> it's all made up crap and probably will never happen, but I'd feel really good. Well, fear is just a negative fantasy. I had other crap being made up in my mind, right? We're going to run out of money. I don't know how I'm going to feed my child. I don't <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And so I was feeling fear. But the truth is, and what my friend pointed out to me, is that the only reason I was feeling as terrified as I was, shaking, is because I was making stuff up. And just making stuff up. Fear is nothing but negative fantasy. Isn't that amazing? Spirit says here, fear is zero code. Right? It's not true. It's not true. And he says, fear must be recognized as nothing. And I'll tell you, that thought, it's just negative fantasy. That makes me see that fear is nothing. It's nothing. 
Now, Spirit continues, You seem to have difficulty recognizing fear as nothing because you believe the personality that fears is something in itself. But the personality is also nothing. It's zero code. Now, for some people, this alone could create fear, this thought that Spirit is now sharing with us in order to be helpful to us. You know, literally, what Spirit was saying is that uh, Regina and Laurent are unreal. They're nothing. So not only is negative fantasy nothing, but the main character within our negative fantasies is nothing. 